Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you the strongest, easiest Diana jungle build that's been taking over the meta, and that is to rush down Nashers into Jack Show, then Demonic. For those of you who aren't aware, if you're a melee champion who can take Lethal Tempo or Conqueror, getting Jack Show's second item is pretty much the meta because it makes it to where you don't die while simultaneously, while your Lethal Tempo or Conqueror is giving exponential value, while simultaneously your stack Jack Show is giving exponential value. Lethal Tempo, of course, giving you more attack speed, Conqueror giving you more AP p and self healing and jack show giving you way more armor and magic resist once it's full stack for your best runes possible take conquer triumph alacrity coup de gras with free boots cosmic attack speed ap and armor going up against a warwick the only matchups on diana that you really struggle with are right now in team fights ramus in team fights ap udir or trying to solo a mordekaiser outside of that diana can really play against anything she's extremely versatile in that way you typically want to start with Leash. Her clears get really good once she's level 3. Level 1 and level 2, her clears are kind of meh. So, something to think about. We'll go ahead and smite this. That way I can hold on to Q. Get our W now. Or I should say E. W will keep you tankier, but your E will give you a slightly faster clear generally. You want to try to spread out your passive every time you use an ability. Gives you a lot of extra attack speed for a few seconds, to be exact, 3 seconds. So you can put in one or two autos and then E. Your passive is why Diana is such a good jungler. Lots of extra damage against monsters in particular. He got a single Raptor. He didn't get much outside of that. That was a very strange play. Go ahead and pop potion so I don't get cheesed by Warwick. Sure enough, Singe does go in for the uh, proxy. Pretty much always want a full clear on Diana. It's the most efficient. Your W ends up blocking two full auto attacks typically from a camp. Double auto back in the E. You never want to put your E on full cooldown against monsters because a full cooldown is 22 seconds, which is kind of crazy. Hey, friend, you're dead. He's out of mana. I may have missed my Q. Oh, we had Flash and Ghost. Okay, all right, all right. So he, he lives with that one. What we could have done there to guarantee the Q land was get closer. The closer you are, the less time they have to react. And the closer you are, it has a much less of an arc. It's more like an instant just in front of you damage. Something to think about. I didn't expect him to have flash and ghost. I should have checked. After he popped ghost and I had him on the cutoff, I thought it was guaranteed. Auto attack E. We should still be able to do a pre-330. Even with uh, those shenanigans. I'm missing a lot of HP though. I wouldn't want to have to deal with Warwick from this position. So it would be best if I just reset. It wouldn't make sense to fight him low HP. Plus Warwick's a very strong soloist. Fighting things like Warwick. Mordekaiser early on is going to be kind of tough. We'll look for double dagger. And we'll grab a control word. You don't really need potions on Diana. Once you're level 3 and up, your clears are pretty much full HP. If you ever are against a proxy champ like Singe as a top laner... You're supposed to guard your minions from the very start as they're leaving base. So you can run out, keep watch, and then when they spawn, you need to be here. And it stops weak level 1, level 2 champions like Singe from getting off a, a proxy. Because Olaf's level 1 is one of the best in the game for fighting and whatnot. Back into the full clear. We couldn't go for gank because we were too low. We lost a lot of HP. And we didn't want to go for scuttle because we knew Warwick was going to be there. We're not going to really win that fight. It's nothing to gank bot side here. Ultimately, Diana is a full clear style jungler, gank, full clear gank, and she is a team fighter. So her two best qualities. That's what we're gonna play towards. Warwick's over a lingering top side. I could take his bot side camps. Nine out of ten times, junglers will start with their bot side for the best leash possible. So with either jungler or laner, you should play off of that, assuming they're started bot side. It's the most common thing. Now I'll pop the W, trying to extend our attack speed. If you space out your abilities in this way, you'll constantly have the extra attack speed from your passive, which is anywhere from 15 to much higher percent. Right now it's 20%, but when we use an ability, it goes all the way up to 57% for 3 seconds. Just depends on your level. You usually go for the attack speed on daggers to get the triple bonus damage from your passive every three autos the third auto will do a bunch of bonus damage in aoe 
We're close. We'll use Q. E onto him. We still have our second E. Auto attack E. I used my second E slightly early. I did it because I could feel he was about to Q and I wanted to go behind him. Whenever you E on top of people, it puts you behind them. So if you're trying to dodge a skill shot or an ability, if you can anticipate it and get behind them, but typically you're going to use the second E once you can no longer reach them with your autos. As long as you can stay on top of them in auto attack, Diana can out damage most champions. Because I mean, think about it. 57% attack speed this early in the game is kind of crazy. Now Warwick's bot side as a fast clearing jungler. Whenever you see the enemy jungler on one side of the map, you typically want to push into the opposite side like this and take their camps, especially with a spam gank style champion such as a Warwick or a Nunu, Lee Sin, Elise. Typically, they will be leaving camps up on the map. This is an easy way to punish it where we're not really risking very much while at the same time they're losing something and we're gaining something yasuo is destroying him in that fight i still have my ghost ghost is way better for team fights it's pro probably worse summoner spell levels one through five but level six and up it's by far superior i'll leave that right there I'm kind of surprised his krugs were down q e w r wait i don't have r what am i talking about for some reason, I thought I had R there. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna get out of here. There's no reason to stay. My whole red side's kind of up right now as well, so I'm on a weird side of the map. I'll hop over the wall. Your Q gives you vision when it hits a champion or a large monster. There they are. Never put the second E on a cooldown. Unless it's against a champion, once you can no longer reach them with your autos. V itself really doesn't do very much damage. It's less damage than an auto attack. 55 right now, it's pretty much nothing. It's just a gap closer, realistically. Gap close reposition tool. GP gets the kill, not surprised. Yasuo is behind. What makes Yasuo players feed so much is the fact that the champion's overloaded and they're constantly limit testing rather than just playing for a guaranteed power spike with the first crit item. They're always looking to do goofball stuff. Warwick just got dragon, so I'll take Harold. Realistically, my bot side's up. He could go and take it, but our best option right now, counter punch to them grabbing drag, is to grab Harold. We can take it really fast. Diana can solo uh, dragons and heralds pretty well. Just make sure you have at least some attack speed in your build. You have some of your Nasher built out. That's the key. Since Diana passive does bonus damage against monsters by 300%. Pretty important. No scuttle speed up. Very cool. Makes sense. I'll ghost for this. Couldn't quite reach him with the Q. I'll camp the minions. Give him no escape route. Suck him in with R. Stay on him with autos. Q into E. And I still have my second E to use there. I don't want to steal that from them. When you're trying to push waves, you typically stand off to the side and arc your Q onto the whole thing, so you'll stand off to the left side. It also depends on where you're standing. So if you're standing here, it curves in like this, but if you're throwing it here, do you see how it curves? You kind of have to take that into account. Depending on where you're standing. It can't quite afford the full Nash. So the best thing we could do is just buy a Dark Seal, leave base. You don't want to sit there and wait in base for over 50 gold, typically as jungle. Because you could take two or three camps, maybe find a gank. The only time you do it is if it's just super, super important, but it's really not. Got a pretty big CS lead on the Warwick. They do have Dragon. We got to start playing for drag fights. Since we have gold advantage, it'll be easy to play for drag fights at this point. I can take Harold mid and get first plate. We have till the 14 minute mark till plates fall off. I think Yasuo is roaming bot side. Yeah, he is. He went missing. My bot lane's pushed. I think my teammate's just dead though. I can't get there in time. And they have a Soraka. I'm going to get giga baited. I knew what is happening. If I could have gotten there in time to try, I might have been able to stop Yasuo. Just one of those things. I didn't realize my teammates were that low on HP. We've got to go for Soraka. She has boots. 
Go for W max second. Got it with Q into E. Smiter. Get them both with the double R for the damage. Hit with a Q point blank range. Auto attack E reset. Auto attack E reset. Down she goes. I can shove this out real quick. I'll back with Herald. I don't want to die to Warwick. Plus my top side's up. There's no dragon here. I have top and mid turret to crack down. Plus we can finish Nash. Typically if you're boots on Diana, you go Sword Shoes because you're so magic damage heavy. With that being said, Swifties and Lucids aren't horrible against their team. I think I'd actually rather have plated. Yeah, I'm in a weird spot in terms of gold because I can either wait for 30 gold or not. So I'll just wait. I kind of wish I went for Sorks now, because I'm looking at their team's damage output. Soraka, Warwick, and Singe do primarily magic damage. They only have two physical damage, and that, that's the Yasuo and Kaisa. We'll see how this plays out. Singe so missing a lot of health. Tier 1 boots. I have Tier 2s. He's moving 375. I'm moving 400. He's dead. Hey, friend. Very nice. I don't think GPR would have killed him on its own. He's just doing it to slow. We are going to catch up to Singed regardless there since we had more movement speed than him. Unless he had Flash or Ghost he was sitting on that we didn't know about. Warwick hasn't invaded our jungle very much. People taking your jungle is more rare these days because you take enemy jungle camps 20% slower than your own. So unless they're a really fast clearing jungler, it's rare to see them come into your jungle. Diane is such a fast clearing jungler once you have uh, some daggers or recurve bow from your first item that uh, you can take their jungles camps pretty fast. I gotta lay this. I gotta kill him. I have R. Your, both your E's are gap closers and your R is basically a gap closer as well. When you can't reach them with your autos and you pop them with an R, then you suck them back in. That's how you should think of gap closers. Hey, I can't reach them with autos anymore. I need to use a gap closing tool. Hit her with a key point blank range, and I literally missed it somehow. Still got off a Herald Body Slam. I just didn't throw it out far enough. You see how there's no curve on it if you throw it close enough? It's just basically a normal ability. It's hard for them to outplay. W max second since you get two E's for free, essentially. Per level, your E damage doesn't get very high. Kite this away from where the work is. He doesn't have very many items. Okay, Smite's on cooldown. We win drag fight now. They can't really contest. I'm more fed than him, and his Smite's probably on cooldown unless he had two charges. If we weren't more fed than him, we wouldn't start dragging like this, because if he comes and this is hitting us in the back, that's a lot of extra damage. My Ghost is up. I don't even know if I've used it yet this game. I haven't needed to. I'll do it here. Kind of holding on to Q. They're trying to dodge it. I still have my second E to close on her. If I had R, she's dead. Plus, I just got her exhaust. I'll act like I'm leaving, but I'm really going to stay. I'll loop around, kill her underneath turret. If she was full health, she might be able to survive a dive. But the fact that I have a full item plus plated, plated is really good in dives. Really, really good. She doesn't have exhaust. She may have R. Soraka may have R. The teammate should hit her first. She's not, she got one shot and she didn't even have time to R. So the reason why Caitlyn should hit first is I'm going to be the one doing the damage because I have more gold spent than her. And on top of that, she can get out of turret range faster than me because she's ranged. She's barely within turret range when she's autoing the Kai'Sa. So she, she can on a dime walk out. Meanwhile, it takes me 10 years to walk out because I'm going to be so deep underneath it with my autos. So in that situation, if you're the Caitlyn, let your Diana get as close as possible and then start autoing. Then your Diana can follow up immediately. A lot of people just don't, they don't understand dive order or dive priority. It's just not something that's really explained or talked about much outside of super high elo essentially. And even then, it's not necessarily explained. Sin's just super, he's dead. He's super far out of position. I'll go for Harold. We're ahead, and their top's dead. If they all collapse, they'll lose the fight. You typically want an actual reason for starting an objective instead of just randomly walking up and taking it. 
That way you can analyze how valid your reasons were for taking it in hindsight if it goes wrong. Diana's clear speed so gross, man. I think she's honestly one of the most broken junglers in the game right now. She's so broken. She has clear, she has gank, she has scaling, she has team fights. Her one versus ones are solid as well, even pre six. They're decent. Uh, she's just so, so, so strong. The main times you don't want to pick her is when your team's already magic damage heavy, because you can't build AD on Diana and all of her abilities do magic damage. I'm going to suck this guy in. I'll suck them both in. Not, ooh, that GP barrel hit hard. I can soak this, I think. Karma just killed us both. Karma. <laughs> uh, she needed to make space. Because I could tank that while she pills. I'm looking at Yasuo's items and he can definitely solo me. I got a reset sitting on a lot of gold. Second like item rush. Always, always Jack Show right now. Once Jack Show gets nerfed for non tanks, then you'll probably just want to go back to Rocket Belt for Gap Closer. But as it is right now, whether you have 1,000 HP, 10,000 HP, 1,000 armor, 10,000 armor, Jack Show does the pretty much same for you. The value is very, very similar to where we're going to get a lot of value out of it. I missed my initial Q. It didn't matter because we have Jack Show Conk. Pretty much every single melee champion can go Jack Show second item. Any melee frontliner Jack, so Jack Show second item rush right now is going to be a very solid build, if not the highest win rate build for that specific champion. So whether it's a Jack Show Aatrox, a Jack Show Nocturne second item, Zin Zhao, Warwick, look at the build win rates. They're very oftentimes the highest win rate build. And worst case scenario, it's a little more situational. It really is dependent on whether or not you go Conquer or Lethal Tempo. If your champion can efficiently run Conquer or Lethal Tempo and it's a frontliner, Jack Show's nasty. Might just end here. GP is doing stupid damage. GP is such an unbalanced champion right now. Got a lot of true damage. If I can get on the Soraka. I think we just end here. I'll do a part two if we end kind of like pre-22 minute mark. I'm not going until I can get in on Soraka. Sin's just trying to fling me into the turret. Oh, this is weird. Oh my gosh. I almost... Oh, I did get Soraka. <laughs> That's crazy, man. We're still, still able to 1v3 even though I'd already lost over half my health. The damage is so freaking good even with Jack show. Because ultimately, being alive with full stack conk is more important. Third item, always demonic. Very nice. My teammates are too low to end, especially if Warwick has R. Oh, man. Nice kite out by the Caitlyn. The Caitlyn Karma. Biggest downside of Warwick. If the enemies have a lot of range CC, it's hard to do anything. Olaf's helping himself to my camps. Very cool. Love to see it. He gets less XP from them because he doesn't have jungle item. Laners either don't know or don't care. A lot of them. They take it whenever they get the chance. Instead of coming for drag fight, he's like, eh, you know what? Diana's camps are looking spicy right about now. I'll be taking this. Wow, did you just rock her? Really just do that? Is she crazy? Hey, you guys are both dead. Pop ghost, she can't get away. I'll go run down this Yas, man. I have ghost extensions on. I'm fast. He's gonna block my Q, so smite him. Q in point blank range, then E. Q him second time, dodge his Q, down he goes. I gotta end right here. I kind of want to do another team fight with Jack Show though, because it's so much fun. Just 
close fight. Singed? He did zero damage and we're standing in his poison the whole time. We're literally standing in his poison and we're not really taking damage. That's hilarious. Literally that whole time, 90% of that duration I was in his poison and they quit. GG's, let's take a look at damage dealt, damage taken. Looking at damage dealt enemy champions, we have the second most in the game behind the Giga Fed GP. Not bad for damage taken, we had taken the most on our team. For self mitigated, we self mitigated the most in the game, not bad at all. For runes, high value. Let's go to part two. Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to part two. Once again, we have the red jungle item with potion, ward, Conquer, Triumph, Alacrity, Coup de Gras, Free Boots, Cosmic, Attack Speed, 80, and Armor. On my way, we're at start. Need a leash, please, into Mew All. It's the best way to start the game, as a jungler in particular, because everyone wants a gank all the time, whether or not it makes sense. Playing against Vi, not a good matchup. In the early game, you'll outshine her in team fights since we have a better R. And I think we have better ganks as well. Her gap closer is dodgeable, ours is not. It's point and click. They can't do anything to dodge it, so we'll connect. Unlike the Vi, you can just straight up dodge it and it's her main source of damage. There's no reason to take Electrocute, Dark Harvest. The only keystones that make sense on Diana is Conk, Lethal Tempo, and Phase Rush. There's very few times Phase Rush actually applies though, since you have two gap closers on the E and basically a gap closer on your R. To where you don't usually need to be faster to stay on top of them, you just need them to be slower, if that makes sense. Or you just need to land your Q. I'm gonna go W level 2 this time. It clears slightly slower, but I think it's worth it. You take way less damage going W level 2 than E level 2. Go ahead and smite that out. Walk up, hit it with a Q, auto attack. Wait till my passive attack speed ends, then I'll activate W. W is a really long cooldown. You can't really use it more than once per camp, anyways, especially a non buff camp, because these things don't have enough HP. The third auto attacks AoE, bada boom, down it goes. Vex mid's gonna be very annoying. Her fear cancels dashes. It grounds you, so. It's really hard to get to her if she times it well. Diana dash is really fast, where she'll probably have trouble timing that. But if she does, that's really gonna suck for us. One more auto. Now that we're level three, we can start to clear much more efficiently. I don't think Vagar dies that. He's gonna hit level two. I could go cheese the Vex right now. She's playing really far up. I almost never recommend ganking pre-level four full clear on Diana, but in situations like this, if Vex stays, I could kill her. I don't think she even has flash. We'll hit it with the Q, do an E, then we'll stagger the W. Now we only have to wait one second or so for the Q. You can stagger your abilities more than I did, but I'm also trying to keep my HP high with Ws. Getting them on a cooldown here. For the most part, you can keep your attack speed on your passive fully activated. Like here, you'll see about a one second gap, then back in the queue. Go ahead and use potion as we finish our clear. And a Diana full clear with leash is pre 315, so about a 313 full clear. Relatively high HP. Now we have time to gank. Ooh, it's a Vi. She's dead now. She missed her Q, so she loses. Plus, I have Conquer. Auto attack E, auto attack. There's no reason for me to really fight this. Even though I have 12 Conk stacks, I might as well drag out this interaction. He got off a good barrel there. Slowed me down. I should still get Scuttle, though. Vi's thought process should have been, I'm a level behind, I shouldn't fight Diana here, but she wanted to force it, just because Vi traditionally beats Diana on Scuttle Fight. Electrocute Vi, I don't think she would have won that even if she landed her Q, to be honest, though. The fact she's down a level, regardless of what key stone she's taking, I think that would have been a hard fight to win. I'm going to leave that for the vague. Just trying to give him the option to re- Oh, we missed it, feels bad. I gotta hurry, push this away from where she's coming from. Got it. It's a double scuttle. I still have ghost as well. Might be able to dive this actually. Vi's right there. I don't know why she ended up over there. Oh, they are ready for the dive. Dang. They're really gonna double ward it? How did they have two wards still? Hmm. I want the scuttle speed up. 
Scuttle speed up's weird. If, if you're in combat, it's not supposed to speed you up, but it seems like if you're not doing damage to them, it'll still speed you up. Very interesting. Out of combat means different things for different things for different items and then, uh, abilities. Like you see there, we got the scuttle speed up even though we are, we are actively taking damage from them. Very cool. Great escape tool. Got out of that one with our ghost. Forced out double ward. If they didn't have double ward there, we could have dealt with them. Sona was super low. We could have one-shot her even without really having items. Vi's bot side. I'm going to invade her top side. Her raptor should be up. I believe. So we could take raps, krugs, be level 6. Generally, you should back at this point. It's only because this is low risk. There's no one going to be over here. We already saw where Vi is. There's no risk in this. But normally, you would want to back once you can afford like a recurve dark sill. On the bright side, Diana being level 3 and up. Farms pretty healthy even without resetting. Pull this out a little bit. Down it goes, and we can hop right over the wall with Q here. We don't have to walk all the way around. Oh, it's gone. Never mind. It's a little surprising. Buy still bot side. I can grab Krog and Wolves here to hit level 6. I could have backed at that point, to be honest, since I'm sitting on so much gold. Instead of doing all this walking around at that point. This is a lot of walking. I'm going to wait till that thing's about to end. You see the blessing. And that's when you want to E when you're staggering your abilities. And that is level 6, 6 minute 40 on Diana jungle. We haven't reset yet. It's generally the fastest way to hit level 6 on any jungle champion. So if you don't reset and you just continue to clear as the camp spawn back in. I don't know if Vex is moving into me here. I'll go ahead and, well, I'll go mid. She's missing HP. GP really isn't. He's also sitting on a barrel, which is a speed up. Not a bad vague, vague cage at all. That was solid. I would just say the vague cage was slightly too early, but still got the job done. Very nice. QEW, R onto her face. I could have staggered our R until she was outside of our auto attack range. Vega was so low on health, it was important for me to dump all my damage onto Vex as soon as possible to ensure he lived. But let's say Vega was full health, I would have held R until I could no longer reach her with autos. So there would have been no reason to waste R. The upside of using R there was her potentially killing Vega if she got barely enough mana to use another ability. I have Ghost here. I don't have R. Vi isn't level 6. She's probably about to hit 6. Down she goes. I have Ghost. Sona, no boots. I don't have boots. Is this warded? It's not. This bush probably is, though. Ah, oh, dang. I couldn't get to them. Vex is right there. I'll block that for the K. Walk into the Vex. I tried to save the K. I couldn't do it though. I have the ghost. Sona hit me with her slow power cord. Sona forced my ghost. I could tell with how she was moving at me. That was going to be the case and that's why I ghosted. Give myself some extra movement speed. Vi is probably level 6 now. Yep, she hit level 6 around 8 minute mark since she was behind. As a jungler, if you're not a behind or ahead, you normally hit at 7 minute 30. If you're ahead... You're getting lots of XP from minions or monsters. You'll usually hit it pre-7 minute. That's like I said, since she was behind, she hit 8 minute mark. Diana and Vi are both big level 6 power spikers. Because you get your ultimate, of course. So, it's one downside to over ganking. If you see a gank and you're not positive it's going to be a kill and it's pre-6, you probably shouldn't go to it. You have to have very high confidence pre-6 for it to make sense. Otherwise, you're delaying your ultimate. And showing yourself on the map, you're getting yourself invaded and losing camps, potentially. Or you're letting the enemy jungler do other wild stuff because they know exactly where you are. Because you showed on a bad gank. So by meeting your teammates is important. They don't understand the dynamics of jungling. The intricacies. And that's why they're not jungling. That's why you are. Because they don't know how. And that's why they play Yumi and they play Malphite and all that stuff. Because that's easier. 
and having to look on the mini map and do a little base, little bit of macro th thought process, macro thinking. If I was bot, it'd be perfect, but I'm not. GP's full health, can't dive that. Could look for the solo on buy since she went electrocute like a goofball. Electrocute buy is super cheesy. It's mainly for ganks, not really for soloing. It's only a good full HP soloist if she's super fed. Just one tap. Go ahead and smite this. They get dragged and that sucks. Might be able to kill if I'm the one tanking. It barely worked out. For those of you wondering why it was so close, more... He stopped tanking immediately. He had shield and he still had two more turret shots at least he could have tanked, but he left after tanking like literally one turret shot. Those are the situations why I don't really recommend diving in ELO's iron through low diamond because you get teammates who they don't understand the fundamentals of diving and they'll leave you hanging for no reason. Like he had zero chance of dying. He could have just stood on the outer range of the turret and then walked out when he needed to. I can't really buy what I want, so instead I'll just start building in a jack show. I want a tier 2 boots. They have a lot of squishies. Their whole team squishy. This is where you'd want Sork Shoes. If they're not very squishy, then you'd push for Plated or Mercs, depending on if you need Magic Resist or Armor. A little surprised Ionian boots aren't recommended, because they are still pretty good. I suppose it's because Diana gets two free E's no matter what her ability haste is. That kind of turns it into not really needing ability haste because you can typically stay on top of your target. Sona out of mana, no boots. I have boots. This is a free fly. I'll ghost for this. I get ghost extensions. Now we walk her down. Let's get a point blank Q off. Auto attack E. I still have my second E. Boop. I just wanted Vagar to get the assist. I could have killed her immediately because if they're anywhere near Vague Cage, it gives him the assist. Vi's probably in the area. Yeah, she is, sure enough. Get him with a double R. I used my E before I died there. It's fine to put your E on cooldown if you're about to die or if you need to secure a kill. Just auto attack E reset the Vex there. With the way Vex was acting, it was very obvious Vi was there. I took a lot of damage and died a lot sooner than I thought I would. Just goes to show how badly we need Jack Show. Push for Sorks here. We'll sell that and buy more Jack Show. Vagar just died to Vi. Oof. This is where Vi power spikes a little bit on an electric heat build when she hits the Eclipse. She's got really snappy damage output. You're not going to see this build do very well in full build late game team fights though, generally speaking. I'll show up to next dragon. I'll path into it here. You might be saying, well, why not rush out for a gank right now? I don't see a gank. Like nothing to me looks... Like there's a specific reason to gank. I don't have R, I don't have Ghost in the enemy's positioning. Now Vex is shoving up so this looks gankable if she stays with the wave. She doesn't, so now I go back to Wolves. You only gank if you're sure it's going to be a kill. If I chose bot side, I could invade her top side right now. It would be a reasonable reaction. My teammates are going to die anyways and then I can't do anything down there. Kaisa's full item. My teammates are both going to die. I got to just go into her jungle now. If I go bot side, what am I going to do? I'll be sitting underneath turret doing nothing. Or I could take her camps and punish her. Guaranteed advantage with no real risk since they're not here. And I can solo any single one of them on their team right now. Armored's popping off. He's getting big. Mord has really good CC versus GP. GP can't really... You can't deal with the hook or the Rylize. There's no way to orange that. Now he can orange the R, but the hook and the perma Rylize slow, he doesn't have a good answer to. They might be rotating into me, so I gotta be patient here. That sucked. I think I die now, yep. Oh, she went all the way around for the loop route. I gotta blow my nose real quick. That was my, I got greedy and I missed my smite. 
That was smart of her. Uh, it was greedy of me. Me getting that red buff wouldn't change the outcome of the game in any meaningful way. And there was high risk since I was so deep in their jungle without any teammates. I thought she was here though, so I figured I could get away if they did collapse. But she actually looped all the way around. I was not expecting that at all. Dragon's coming up. Mord gets a triple dipple. Vi's <laughs> so much magic resist, bro. Caitlyn's going to have a field day with her. I'll take red buff into dragon. I'll get finished the jungle item off of it because I have a treat. I think they make treats count for three instead of one now on your jungle item. So like a total killing a monster camp plus treat is, e is equal to three now instead of two. And drag souls the win con. Diane is a team fighter. Could ghost for this. That's a double R. And man, I died fast. I died really fast there. It was apparently CC for three seconds, so I don't I don't believe that though. They don't have three seconds to CC there. We're gonna need Jack Show to deal with by. Bit of an annoying champion. She has the type of CC where it stops our autos. We can't keep autoing while we're displaced. I didn't have the damage to one shot Sona there. It took a few too many autos. Unfortunate. Needed to go back to full clearing and ganking when it makes sense. Since Caitlyn was already dead, it was kind of forced to where it wasn't a super smart gank. I thought I could kill Sona instantly to where it would be a 2v2 and not a 2v3. Vi has more kills than me. I have a lot more CS than her, though. Just seven kills. More kills than anyone on my team. Incredible. We don't have to stagger our abilities anymore. We're on low enough cooldowns. We can pretty much immediately QEW on monster camps every time. And not really miss out on any extra passive attack speed. I should take my rafters. What a butthole. She's probably bot side again. She's not going to gank Mord. Bot side's her easiest gank with how they're playing. Me and Mord both are getting jack, so that's hilarious. Vi's mid now. She's going to R on Vague. He should be able to cage it. Cage was too neutral. He needed to lay it more defensive. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter who we get on here. As long as we get one of them. Let's stick with the Herald. Oh, it turned its back to GP. What in the world? I'll tank it for him. And Mord's literally not hitting him while I'm tanking for turret shots. <laughs> Alright. This Mordekaiser does not like to do dives. Whether he's tanking or not, he's not a fan. Herald's dead before it touches turret. Sona can kill it. Yep. Mord's R is on cooldown. I can't save him. There's absolutely nothing I can do. I'm missing health. I don't have R. Kais is kind of fed too. Our bot lane had to rotate to stop that. If I turn, I die. You might be able to argue it's worth though. Since Mord had shutdown, maybe I should have sacrificed myself in hindsight. If my bot lane didn't rotate. I slowed her with my red jungle item. We'll go ahead and ghost. I want extensions off of her anyways. Hey, friend. Oh, almost had her. I was kiting around the GP barrel. Couldn't quite finish her off. Exhaust is kind of OP, man. Full jack show now. We probably wouldn't have died at that point. If we had jack show. All the extra armor and magic resist. Oh man, what a fight. One more auto attack and I think Kaisa dies there. It was a tricky situation to kite on because I was having to sit on the outside border of the barrel. So when he went to hit it, I could take a half a step out. 
Kaiso should have kept kiting backwards and made it a little bit more space across the barrel. I don't think she was expecting my burst. I'm not a big fan of exhaust. I think they could remove it from the game or change the way it works. There's no counterplay. You have to have clans or QSS to counterplay it. The amount of damage it reduces is kind of nuts. It's the best soloist summoner spell in the game by far. Not the best hyper carry though. I think ghost is the best because one killer assist, you get the extensions and then you have it for most of the fight. If not the full fight. He needs to play for dragon here. Drag is the obvious win con. Vex moving 400. I'm moving 400. I can't catch her. It's obvious dragon here. Even if we have a dead teammate, I saw one or two of them top side. And they're kind of floating mid right now. They're not playing for it necessarily. We can get in so many auto attacks before we have to use our E now. Our attack speed's super high. Got it. Mord's tanky. They can't kill him quickly. GP just did something there. I saw a Vex die, but I don't know what killed her. GP can't do any damage to us at all. He was hitting us there, and it was doing nothing, and he has all of his crit. Oh, I missed my Q. Dang. Hey, friend. You're dead. Smite for the slow. Walk into a W. Look how they do no damage now. GP and Kaisa, they both couldn't even really get past the shield. The damage output. Mord's Diana's worst uh, counter in the game at the moment. He's so tanky and he has a lot of percent based damage. When Diana builds many HP items like Demonic, and Sunfire, and even Shadow Flame. Mord's annoying to deal with. Plus, a lot of Diana's burst becomes mitigated by his shield. If you're going to want to play Diana, normally you look for the Mord ban. Why are you here? This is weird. Why was Diana even there? It's very strange. Or but why was Vi even there? <laughs> She's in a really weird spot. I had two level advantage on her, but she wanted to fight with the Sona. It's time to ghost for this. I, I want the extensions. I'm going to go ahead and put my E on full cooldown. Hey, Sona. That's more extensions for me. I am running out of mana, though. I got to kite back. I got Kaisa to panic R. At least putting E on cooldown in a fight, wait, waiting 15 seconds is kind of gross. I'll chill in jungle for a bit, getting nearly 20 mana back per second because we're missing so much from our jungle item. More it's chasing a kill, probably not the best idea. We already have mid inhib, there's nothing for us to get there. It's going to take too long to push minions to turret and take turret while they're underneath it. Hey, friends. Maybe Mord can live here. Maybe not. Who do I kill, bro? Oh my god. I live forever, but... <laughs> Vima plus Sona shields too much. I wonder if we're going to have the most damage dealt in the game. I have a feeling we might. It's going to be me or the Mord at the moment. Typically at this point, you'd go for Sunfire if you need the armor. Otherwise, you'd press for Shadow Flame. Against their team, they're Triple AD, GP, Vi, and Kaisa. Argument for Sunfire is strong here. That's exactly what we're going to do. How much magic resist do they have? It's mainly just the Maw on Vi. So ideally, we're not focusing her. Ideally, I'm on... Uh, I guess it's Kaisa as well. I don't know why she bothered with Mercurial Scimitar. I guess to get out of Mord R. 
If she kites it out right, she he probably won't even be able to touch her in a team fight. He doesn't have ghost. She could kite him out. Team's getting picked out in the middle of nowhere. Why is this happening? I, I'm dead. I can't move. Oh man, that CC is so strong. It's actually crazy to me how hard our team got picked while Vi still had her R for me. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. I figured Vi R was on cooldown. You can't really dash to the other side of her on Diana, because right when she finishes her R, she'll knock you with her Q. So I was spamming E there and couldn't get it off because the RCC lasts for so long, even once it looks like it's finished. Caitlyn and Karma need to stop dying so much. They're dying at really bad times. Draxel is definitely still the win con. Baron doesn't really change anything, to be honest. They don't win team fights. All they can do is get picks with Vi's Eclipse. And now she's dead, and now they lose everything. Well, in theory. Meanwhile, I'm the one losing all the HP. I'm not on ghost extensions anymore. I was trying to get that before it wore off. I think I slowed them both there with red jungle item. Yeah, I'd rather have Dragon than Baron at this point anyways, to be honest. Because it's not the type of game where they can force down and end the game real quick anyways. Oh my god, why are they stacked there? They're four-man stacking when they have supers in their base. That's really something. They're just, they're just going to wait in that bush and hope we went there. Because do you know what happens when they do that? What can they do out of that? Nothing. Because they have supers in their base. By the time they push to our turret, I'll be spawned in. That's why it's such a weird thing. I thought I could nick a camp or two. These guys are playing super, 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 super kill heavy. That's a decent trap from Caitlyn. Sona follows it up with the R though. Wow. I think our team's way too magic damage heavy. It's part of why this game is way harder than it needs to be. Because regardless of how fed we get, Vi has a bunch of magic resist, and even Kaisa has an MR item to where our Sork Shoes are doing nothing, essentially. This was definitely not the best Diana angle. In a game like this, it would have been much better to be something like a Zin Zhao or AD Udyr. Uh, Diana's still decent. She's still decent here, for sure. As long as you have at least one AD champion on your team, it's not doomed. Yeah, look at that. Vistage Ma. I can't kill that. She might even be able to solo me with Electrocute. She has so much MR. I can't take that portal. There's five man stacking up in random areas. She's trying to find a random pick with her R. I'm not sure if she went back for me there or not. Apparently, Caitlyn died there somehow. She didn't even get hit by Vi. She got, must have hit by uh, the Vex. She did a lot of damage there. Holy crap. Vague's for some reason split pushing because, you know, Vagar, definite split push champ. He's 100% dead. All we can do is push the wave while... Uh, He's deciding he should be doing that. I'll go push top.
It is what it is. Our team is way too afraid to team fight when we have the better team fight. I can't stay. They're going to be grouping up on this area. It is what it is. I want that blue buff. Caitlyn's going to help herself. She even laid a trap on it. Nice. Mort should have a free R there, yep. I think they know they need to let Vex die. That barrel almost hit me. GP stalling the game out with his barrels. Half health R support with one barrel there. What the heck is that Mordekaiser R? It's giving him wings because he still has stats from the enemy, but that's a disadvantage for the enemies to know that. Like, that's a bad thing. Bad, not good. You don't want them to know you have a bunch of extra stats, and that gives it away. Where did Vagar even just die? I don't see his little thing on the map. They're so hungry for buffs, man. I, can't, I don't think I can back here. It's too dangerous. I want to back and get Sunfire for drag fight. I got to reset. Drag fight's coming up. Hopefully we go for drag and not for Baron. This is Soul. Soul is so much more important than Baron. Baron's practically useless unless you can't end because they're clearing the waves. They, it's not that they can't end because they're clearing the waves. They can't end because we've been pushing their waves. Oh, wow. Is Vague AFK? Is he actually AFK on a Drag Soul fight? Sick. We could just take this. They didn't prior it. They're, they're playing for CS and kills. As long as everyone hits it, they lose it. That should be game. We'll see. Mord flashes in. Don't know about that one. We'll see how that goes. Lies going in hecka deep. And she absolutely destroyed our AD carry. Why's killing my team? Well, I'll kill her team. Screw her. <laughs> I can't fight her. She's full magic resist. Caitlyn should have built a GA or something to deal with that. You would think karma pilling for her would make her unkillable, but apparently not. Oh, I'm tanking. My uh, jungle item's burning her. Down she goes, and that's game, guys. Moral of the story, don't play for kills. If you're playing for kills, you will lose the game. 100%. Even with... Yeah. Look at damage dealt, damage taken. I have a feeling... I have a sneaky feeling we might be number one, number two. Looking at damage dealt enemy champions, we did indeed have the most on our team. Vi had the most in the game by far. Kind of crazy, especially with an electric heat build Eclipse. I might have to look a little bit into that. With that being said, she was able to stack full magic resist where she wasn't really dying in fights because our team was full AP and she was able to consistently one-shot the Caitlyn. Looking at damage taken, we had taken the most in the game. It's a little bit surprising, actually, because Mord was tanking a lot as well. So he got self-mitigated. We literally took the most damage in the game. I don't know how we took more than more. It's hard to believe. But did the most damage on our team, not the most in the game. And took the most damage and self-mitigated the most in the game. Not bad. For runes, ultra high value. Diana with Jack Show is nutty. If your team needs a front line, if your team needs AP, Diana is about as good as it gets because she's so mobile and sticky. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.